everybody. It's Deborah Poneman, founder of Yes to Success and Ageless and Happy, Merry, Everything, Almost Christmas, Almost Kwanzaa, Hanukkah. Anyway, a few days after solstice. Actually, speaking of the winter solstice, I was teaching a class last year at this time, and someone put in the chat, happy winter solstice, tongue twister, solstice. And although I knew it was the longest night and the shortest day of the year in the Northern Hemisphere, I realized that I didn't really know that much about the solstice and decided to take a look a little bit more deeply into the significance. And I learned a lot that I wanted to share with you. So I was looking at why people celebrate the solstice. And do you know that there is not one culture that celebrates the darkness, but every culture I looked into celebrates the returning of the light? Because you're going from the shortest day of the year to longer and longer days, thus more and more light. And so, for example, I discovered that the Hopi Indians celebrate a festival that they call Soil, yeah, like rhymes with royal soil, where they welcome the Kachinas, the protective spirits from the mountains who arrive on the solstice day, carrying torches of light. They come over the mountain. It's a beautiful ceremony. You can look on the internet and see um, pictures of it, movies of it. In Persia, they celebrate the festival of Yalda that is viewed as the victory of light over dark and the birthday of the sun god Mitra. And in Japan, no, no, I'm, I'm sorry, not Japan. Where was it? China. It was China. The winter solstice is a major holiday with the celebrations dating back to the Han Dynasty in 2006 BC. So throughout China, people visit temples as the sun rises and they celebrate the return of the strength of the positive or the yang energy. And here in the West, Christmas is also often referred to as the festival of lights or the season of lights. We see lights on houses, lights on trees, lights in our churches, lights on the table, of course, lights in our heart, as those of the Christian faith celebrate the birth of the being of light, Jesus Christ on earth. And during the Jewish holiday of Hanukkah, known as the Festival of Lights, Jewish people light the eight candles on their menorah, a new light each of the eight days of Hanukkah, celebrating the miracle of having only enough oil for one day after the destruction of the second temple. What they found is they found the menorah and they found this little teeny vial of oil that would only burn for one day, but miraculously the oil burned for eight days. So that's why we light eight candles on Hanukkah, one on each day. And of course, during Kwanzaa, which begins on December 26th, candles are lit for seven nights. And each night represents a different principle of Kwanzaa, like unity and faith and purpose. Very beautiful holiday. I think that one of the reasons that there is a lightness in the air at holiday time is that the collective consciousness in the world is focused on light and light allows us to find our way out of the darkness or um, our way in the darkness. And at this time on our planet, light is very much needed as we know. And we also know that the more we put our attention on something just by the power of our intention or attention, it grows in the world. So let's use this time of the year and especially these holiday times, which of course means holy days, to put the power of our attention on what is filled with light, the good in the world. And there's so much good. So instead of spending our holiday time with our family and our friends, taking the conversation from bad to worse about, you know, the war and the political divide and the increase in crime and all of those seemingly the snowstorm insurmountable problems, not that we're ignoring them or pretending they aren't happening, but by us talking about them, we're fueling them by our attention. We're increasing the darkness and the fear in the world. So why not instead talk about what's good in the world? You might even want to go around the table, even if it's a Zoom table, and each person can share something good that's happening in their lives. 
And then you might even want to go around the table again and add something good that's happening in the world. And I was thinking about this. I was thinking about um, how many times I, I read articles about people really reaching out to Ukrainian refugees and, and welcoming them welcoming them into their homes and and making the the shelters. You know, I um, I'm involved in the Art of Living Foundation, which is the organization that I teach meditation through. And we have ashrams in both Poland and Germany. And do you know that they completely converted both of those ashrams into shelters, beautiful shelters. They have childcare and, and yummy meals if they like Indian food, but I think it's yummy, yummy meals. And um, most of all, lots and lots of love and care and comfort to refugees. Refugees. So both of those ashrams are now refugee centers for Ukrainians. And I read a story the other day about a mother. You can share this one at your holiday table. It was about a mother with two children uh, who really had no money for Christmas dinner or Christmas presents. And they were walking down the street and she found a wallet. It's a true story. Found a wallet filled with money lying on the sidewalk and she um there was a address on the driver's license but no phone number but she, she searched and searched for hours and she finally found found a, um this person who the wallet belonged to well she gave it back to um i think it was a him a him without a penny missing and needless to say he was thrilled to have it back and her children asked her why she did that when no would no one would have ever known if she kept it. And she said to them, well, that's not true that no one would ever know. God would know. And you would know. Right? And by the way, if you can't think of anything good in the world, go to websites like CNN, Good Stuff, or my favorite, The Optimist Daily, that is just overflowing with incredible good news in the world. And as each person shares, they will not only be bringing more light into their own life, but also into the lives of the people at the gathering and the collective light will radiate out and can contribute to more and more light in the world as a whole. And, you know, just like a forest, for a forest to be green, each individual tree has to be green for the world to be filled with light. Each individual must start with him or herself. And I'm going to end this message today with uh, a story. And it's a story about an old man who was very poor and very unhappy. And he heard that in a far off land, there was a shrine that had a very blessed, holy fire flame. And if you could light your lamp with this flame and bring it back to your house, it would illuminate your house. And not only would you be happy for the rest of your life, but it would bring happiness and prosperity and good health to everyone in your household. So he made the decision that he was going to go and find the shrine and he would bring light his lamp and bring the light back to his house. So he walked for days and days and days. And finally, he found the shrine and he's lit his lamp and with great exhilaration he began his trek of many days back to his home and it was not an easy trek up mountains and through across rivers anyway when he was less than one day away from his home he met a man who was homeless and shivering in the cold who asked him if he could use the man's lamp to light a fire and the man was so afraid to open his lamp and expose it to the wind but his heart told him he had to do it for this poor man who was so cold. So he lit a fire for the man without his flame going out and continued on his way home. And with less than half a day journey to go, there was a huge thunderstorm and the man's lamp was extinguished. Heartbroken, he, he knew he would never make it back to the shrine. He was too old. It was too hard of a trek, and he was too tired and broken. Then he had the thought, but I could go back half a day to find the homeless man with the fire, which he did. And he lit his lamp, brought the light home, and his life was filled with light from that day forward. So I'll leave it up to you to decide what the moral of the story is and what was the real source 
of his happiness for the rest of his days. So I wish you a season and a lifetime filled with light by being the light, by spreading the light, by sharing the light. And I also included a link to a wonderful video down below of uh, children in Africa singing Feliz Navidad that will bring even more light to all of your holiday celebrations. Happy holidays and lots of love to you.